Good day, everyone. Welcome to our first YouTube Live. This one about pruning. This is certainly the time of the year. Some of you may have started. Some of you are confused about it, but I hope to bring some clarity to that. I want to do three things on this live. Uh, the first one would be, I'll just give you a little bit of the origin of this whole adventure in pruning for me and how I came to basically distill all this great information. Then we'll look at the three key steps, and that's a really important one. It's the basis of the whole thing. And then we'll unpack something really, really keen, really neat. Ready? Rainy day? Yes, it is a rainy day. Thanks for the, for the chats. Um, just to give you an idea, if you, you see on the screen this picture of the orchard, well, this is looking, this is the replanted orchard. We started this adventure going almost 30 years ago, and this farm had 4,000 apple trees when we purchased it. Now, for some of you, I want to make you feel comfortable. We bought 4,000 trees. I knew nothing about fruit trees. I knew even less about pruning. And I just started. I said, oh, yeah, you know, we got to prune. So let's start pruning. Not a recommended way to start. We pretty quickly had 100 trees, no, 150 trees on a gradual death decline. They weren't doing well right from the start after pruning, and they didn't do very well pretty quickly. And in fact, combined with the stresses of improper pruning and some weather, within two years we had lost a thousand trees. So there's a bit of a cost involved in that. I don't recommend you start without having any clue. I did. I don't recommend you do that. So if you figure how much, I don't even want to count how much that cost me, but that was an important learning lesson. So then I began to take yearly workshops from uh, professionals in pruning of orchards. And I did that for several years. And after about 10 years, I actually felt confident enough in pruning that I started to teach pruning. But when I was teaching pruning, I never felt totally at ease in a simple way that you could learn and you'd go, yeah, I know exactly where I'm going. So although I was teaching it, I didn't really like the method. And I was really fortunate because in 2009, so that's been a little while already, I was had the chance of taking a course with two of the best people in the world, probably the best, on pruning. And it was a one-week course. It was very humbling when you see orchardists and people who have had thousands of trees for three generations. When they get told their orchard is a piece of bzzzt, you realize, my goodness, uh, maybe I don't feel so bad about not knowing exactly what I'm doing. So in, those, in that week, they really taught us the, these basics and these basics to understand your tree, to understand how to prune, to learn how to look at a tree. All the stuff I'm talking about in, in the pruning course, some of the most important stuff that I'll tell you today. And finally, with that course, it all began to, to come together. I could understand how there's a framework, a three-step process, and that's what I want to show you today, that three-step process, which is, it makes the confusing part of pruning that much simpler. Some of you say, hey, I, I've cut trees, I've gone in the forest and I've cut trees down, or I've cut up firewood. Please don't confuse pruning with cutting wood. It's not the same, okay? So if you, and maybe you say, well, I've used a chainsaw and I've cut a lot of wood. That's great. That's forestry. That's cutting trees down. That is not pruning. Just 
understand that there is a distinction. And if you take those experience that you've had in the woods and put it into fruit trees, you're just going to make mistakes that much faster, especially when you use mechanized tools. So take a little bit, sit down. We're going to take a look at, at these basics. All right, so let's go through the three steps. Let's take the first one here. All right. Pitch angle, critical to know. Let's go back to the beginning. Maybe you're like me, you like to just get started. I want to show you a quick and dirty to get you started. The importance between learning branch angle, critical to know the difference between having a tree and a fruit tree. And showing you the three simplest versions of steps. So with this, you can get started. All the rest in the film are important details that you will need to know. How do you make the cut? When do you cut? When do you prune? Why do you prune? All of these will be in the rest. But if you want to just get started, or if you've seen the whole film, and you want to come back and be able to prune without having to go through the whole thing, check out the quick and dirty. So the first point is branch angle. Do you want a tree? Imagine I'm the trunk. These are the branches. You see, they're up in the air, pointed up. That's a tree. You'll get a tree. Or do you want fruit? So if your angle's down here, this will give you fruit. It will not go crazy on branches. So learning that distinction, do you want a tree? Do you want fruit? We'll go through that many times because if there's one thing that's the most obvious and simple as you practice will be to look at a branch and know, oh, that's fruit. Oh, that's a tree branch. So that distinction is really important. The next point are the three steps. We'll start with the first one. First one is for the centrifuge technique, you say, oh, well, I don't want to need to know techniques. Let's just say the first one will be to clear a chimney around your tree. Maybe you've seen what a chimney looks like, right? It's a pipe. Now imagine the tree trunk is on the inside of your chimney. So that's the one that guides where your chimney will go. And all we want to do is have a chimney that's clear for two reasons. One, to let air go up and down along the trunk. Two, decrease the amount of disease because it dries the tree up from the center. And the second is that it allows light in from the top, like a light chimney, if you like. There is only one e exception to that rule. If you're in some place like we saw this in the south of France, where light isn't limiting. You've got a lot of light. If you're in Mediterranean climate, if you're in California, if you're in the south where you don't get winter or what we call winter, then you may want to leave at the top of your chimney one or two or three branches there and don't clear everything out of the top. So it's like having a chimney cap. Imagine having a cap. Now that cap lets air out, but it doesn't let the sun come in and so you don't risk getting a sunburn on the inside of your tree. So that's the only exception. Every place that pretty well gets snow, you will want a chimney right up to the top. Now how do you do the chimney? Quick and dirty. You don't usually need these unless it's the first time and you've never done the chimney. You may need it for some branches. I'll show you the formula, but you don't need the formula for how to know how big a chimney is. The bigger the trunk, the bigger the chimney should be. If you can't put your tree, your arms around the trunk of the tree, then you'll need a chimney that is measured by your body length 
that would be one side of the chimney and the same with the other. This is not in that range. So you could do with what I call just your hand measure. So that's about six inches or 15 centimeters. So you could quickly do that by putting your hand on a branch, put your hand on a branch to check if there's anything. Oh, you see, if I put my hand here, here's a couple of branches. Now, I could get fancy with my seconders, or I could just break these off. Now you say, well, what are you breaking off? I'm breaking off what isn't a major branch or a future major branch. And details of what's the distinction we'll see later. But put your hand on, that's in the range, then take it off. And keep going, that's in the range, take it off. Oh, these are being trained. We'll see that in the training versus pruning part. That's a training wire, so I could put that aside for next time if I need. And I keep going. Here's something, now that's getting higher, but that's not a branch. You say, well, what is a branch? A branch is anything that has grown, I consider anything that has grown at least 12 inches. So 30 centimeters, this is more than 30 centimeters. This is the new growth from last year. And we'll learn how to distinguish the years of a branch. But if it grew this much from the trunk, that's a branch. So you can leave that to give you options. But anything else, you can remove. So as we get higher, you can use a ladder. I highly recommend you get yourself some extension, get yourself some poles. And I like these because being a pole myself, these are quite good to use. And then with the pole, you can continue without having to go up. So this is in the chimney up here. Take that off. This is in the chimney. Take that off. That's in the chimney. That doesn't, didn't grow. How much did it have to grow? 12 inches. That didn't grow that much. Take that off. That too. You say, if you distinguish them, and we'll see that, that is actually a fruiting spur. Think, like, why do you want to take off what's going to have fruit? Because it's in the chimney, and you'll see later, it just makes it simpler and clearer for the tree. So take that off. Take that off. And so on and so on. That's in the chimney. Whoop. And let me give you another little tip right away. I always go by, when in doubt, cut it out. I say, well, what do you mean? Well, because a lot of times pruning is a mental activity and you get tired of making decisions. So if you're hesitating, cut it out and you can't put it back. And keep going right to the top. That's in the chimney. That's in the chimney. This is in the chimney. Oh, I cracked that one. So if I cracked it, and I cracked it a lot, think, oh, now I have to cut it off. We'll see that in training. Just because it's cracked doesn't mean it's going to die. So if I cracked it, and it was in a pretty good spot. Actually, that one isn't in a pretty good spot. But I could leave it. If it's half of the bark is holding, it will still give a good branch. This one is not in the right angle. We'll see that in step two. So we can come back to it for step two. And continue all the way up to the top. Chimney. Chimney. Now we're up near the top. Chimney. Chimney. And that gives us a pretty good pipe. There's a couple left up there why I say use a pole instead of a ladder because if you have to go up to do this it's far more risky chimney and chimney oh there's one more there now I've got pretty well my step one done 
I've got my chimney figured out. And so that is the first point. One of, one of the most important things about having a good chimney is it allows regenerating branches to come out. There are latent buds in there, and if the light is sufficient, those branches will come out. So that's the first step. Second step, all right, that's the first step. Just wanna clarify if there's any questions about this step, if there's any point uh, that you didn't quite get about the chimney, just put it down in the uh, comments. Uh, pick up a few of the comments here. Yes, well, if you're in an area like Southern California, you're in full bloom. We're certainly not there, so your pruning would have been January and February in timing. Um, he said, uh, okay, any, any points about this that isn't clear? Let's see. Just want to point out some of the things. Uh, so this video gives you the, the really the three uh, foundational steps in it. Just go over a little bit about the chapter. So one of the things about the, the way the pruning course is set up, it's set up to allow you to look around to see what's there. It's set up so that you can check. Oh, that's what that was. All right. Yeah, that was the second step. Um, it will even give you details about some of the trees. And so we'll give you further insights in it. It really is a multi-layered course where you start off with one thing and it's kind of like a rabbit hole. You can just get going deeper and deeper and in depth. So this is the cursory. This is the first overview of the core elements, but we can go a lot deeper in it. And just to give you an idea of, what is this? give you an idea of the chapters, so this is the first chapter. That I call it the quick and dirty. It really is meant to get you started. If, you, if you've if you experienced pruning and you say, I've pruned for 10 years, chances are the quick and dirty might be all that you need. Unless you've been making mistakes, then, well, sorry. But if you if you feel that you've you understood your pruning techniques and all the details of it, then this may get you going perfectly in a simple three-step approach. Second chapter, we look at the whole thing about do you have to prune or don't you have to prune? And that's an important question, it really is. We have actually the, the block of trees you see behind the first trees here is a no prune orchard. And so I'm experimenting, I'm learning, I'm watching the trees, I'm observing, and let me tell you, if you don't prune, that's a lot less work. But there's a reason why you prune. There's a, I'm not going into all of it, but you can not prune or you can prune, but you have to get it at the right time or don't start that. The next one is when to prune. So the seasonality, we look at all the points about, hey, when should you prune? The fourth chapter looks at the tools. Well, you know, what, what tools are you going to use? Uh, what tools should you use? What tools do you absolutely need is really what it comes down to. Because you can have, uh, I've acquired and accumulated a lot of pruning tools. But do you need them all? That's a good point. Fifth chapter looks at the pruning principles. And there are a lot of principles. There's things to understand. How does your tree react? How does your branch react? You know, what happens if? That's really the key of the principles. To be able to, and I always say, that pruning is all about being able to project the future. The more you're confident in what you do will do what, like the, the effect that each pruning cut will do, Wow, you're going to feel a lot more confident. That's the one that in the beginning, I know that's what really holds you back because you're doing something, but you don't know what will happen. And so understanding your principles really well 
and being able to project what's that branch going to look like three years down the road. Wow, that's, that's really useful. The pruning techniques. So there is a whole lot of different cuts and techniques that you can use, and we go through them and what, what they'll give you. So, and there's been additions to these. Basically, we, this is version two of the pruning course. The original one, we took to heart all the comments, any questions of, hey, you didn't touch, oh yeah, that's right. If you want to get into that detail, I didn't touch that. So we went over and we added half again as much videos and content in here. The pruner's eye, chapter seven, that is critical. Because if you don't know how to look at a tree, so well, you look at a tree. <laughs> if you just say, oh, I'm looking, I'm looking at a tree on the screen here. Well, what are you looking at? How do you look at it? How do you look at it so that you don't stand there for 20 minutes and don't know what to do? So that's really important. And it follows up in the next chapter, chapter eight, mental, physical. And I say pruning is a mental game. I've often been more exhausted mentally than physically because if you just prune one tree, depending what type of pruning and what techniques you're using, you may have made three cuts and you may have made 30 cuts. Well, 30 cuts means 30 decisions. So that whole thing, how to basically get the most out of your day because if you only have one tree, it, you can take all the time you want. When I have over 2,000 trees, I can't take all the time I want. So there is a step-by-step -step process that you need to understand and understand most of all the Pareto principle. Um, pruning versus training. Well, there is, there is a whole thing right in that. And it's really great to understand. We'll touch on it briefly in the second step, but it's, it really is. You want to understand, let me give you one point, that you can spend as long training a tree as you will pruning it. Okay, so if it takes you 10 minutes to train a tree, it can take you 10 minutes to prune the tree. However, if you've trained the tree once, you may never have to come back and spend 10 minutes pruning it. You may actually go years before you need to come back and intervene. So that whole pruning versus training, it's a real, wow, it's a, oh, I didn't think about that. And yeah, uh, that's where Dr. Lespinas and uh, Michel Ramoguilhem really brought home to us the understanding of that importance. The 10th chapter is branch management. <laughs> We're not talking about branches to office branches. We're talking about what do you do after you've pruned? What do you do? What could you do? And even how you can profit from branches. So there is a whole thing. You could pay for this course easily if you understand how you can profit from branches you're pruning. Pruning shrubs, there's a whole new section that we've added because shrubs, if you're gonna put in a permaculture orchard, this is based on my work at the permaculture orchard. Well, we're putting shrubs. We have two shrubs, or aim to have two shrubs, under every fruit tree and every non-fruit tree, because we have fruit trees and non-fruit trees in our orchard. And a summary. So there is a lot in there. Um, there is a lot in there. Let me just take a few comments before we continue. Yes, hello for those who have just joined in. Uh, vertical axe, absolutely, it is a powerful technique to understand. <laughs> Smash the thumbs up, yes, for sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, if you're in Florida, yes, it, it things have bloomed. And now let me make that point. For those of you in Florida and elsewhere, this course as it is right now, is not intended for people in the subtropics or the tropics with subtropical species. Some of you can grow temperate climate species in the subtropics, and that's fine. That's absolutely applicable. But it is not looking at your evergreen citrus and so on. Although the same techniques, especially in the 
the three steps would apply, but I am not looking at that aspect. That's a whole different thing. Timing is very different. And so that is not my expertise, by the way, either. Um, I hope to next year go south and, uh, and give you content on that that I can add in here. All right. Let's continue. Uh, oh. Is the new material on the course in separate videos or have you redone some of the old ones? It's all separate material. Yeah, it's all added. So those, of, those who have bought the pruning course in the past, this is all, you're not paying anything more. It's just added content in there. It's uh, added how much about, about an hour of added content. So there's a lot of material in here. This whole course has over two and a half hours of video. And yeah, there. <laughs> it's complete, let me say, it's complete. I wish I had this that first year. I wouldn't have lost 150 trees. You think, well, 150 trees out of 4,000 at that time is not that big of a deal. Well, how much does it cost per tree? Easily, easily, because these were producing trees, a tree is worth minimally $20 in that condition in an orchard. Because if you have to replant, it's easily that. So $20 times 150, there's $3,000 that I lost just because I didn't know. So it, it is quite an important one. Um, all right, let's go on to the... The second step, so we did the first, we did the chimney, and now we'll look at the second important step, and that's choosing your branches. Is to choose to keep 12 to 15 branches. That's all a tree needs to be in full production. So you say 12 to 15. If you counted your branches on most trees, a tree will generally have double that. So if you wanted finally to be down to 12 branches, most trees will have produced 24. But nature is always like that. Always give you more than what you need, so you always have spares. So now that you're pruning, you'll say, okay, how many have I got? So count them up. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten back here. Wow, we're already up to ten. I can see this tree's got more than it needs. And eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Whoa, here's some I should have taken off. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's got about 28 branches. Obviously a lot more than 12 to 14. So now there's a simple three, three letter acronym, LBL. And I thought, LBL, let's put it into a label, L-A-B-E-L. Anyway, figure out a way to remember that it's LBL. And what does each stand for? L is low, B is big, and L is line. Let's start with the first one. L for low branches. The gentleman I learned this from, he said your low branches, just don't like having a saw in my hands if I'm talking. The low branches, or anything that's below four feet. That's below four feet. So they recommend that we remove branches that are below four feet. Well, you know what I got a lot of here? We got a lot of rabbits and voles. In fact, I see some rabbit chewed down there. So if I take out these branches, and this was something I learned from Sepp Holzer, he said, if you don't leave branches, the critters will choose. Do I eat branches? There's none to eat, so I'll eat the trunk. 
And I've seen this, especially in this block three years ago, we had every branch below three feet was completely white, but not one tree suffered on the trunk. So I now keep low branches. I don't remove them. Low branches being some that when they're bent down like this, will end up touching the ground and the fruit will be on the ground. I accept that. It's not the neatest or the nicest, but it's great insurance in a year when there's a lot of voles and a lot of rabbits and you may have other critters that come and chew the bark. So keep your low branches. If you have a very tall tree, then your low branches, if it's a standard, a large, large standard tree, your low branches might be six feet up in the air and as they spread out, they may stretch so that they actually touch the ground. And that's okay, that's your low branch, but you want to keep that and you want to keep some branches touching the ground. That's low. What was V for? V was big branches. How do you know if a branch is big or not? You look where the branch is attached. We'll take that one for example. The point of attachment and the diameter of that branch versus the trunk. So if that's one centimeter and the trunk is two centimeters, one to two or 50%, then that's a branch you may want to remove. In this case, that is definitely not 50%. These are getting close to 50%. So they may be candidates that I would look at removing. If it's over 50, if it's 60, 70% of the diameter, then you shouldn't really ask yourself too long, do I take it out or not? Because it very likely to have grown that big, it has a branch going up, far more vigorous than that. It has a branch going up that is trying to be the new trunk. You don't want two trunks on a fruit tree. So just to make it simple, that's an easy rule. You look at the tree top to bottom, are there branches that are too big? And I see that one is. There's a couple up there that are. So those are the ones, that's the rule to help you choose which branches to remove. So there's a few up there, and I'll see what else. So low, that's fine. Keep some low branches. Big, look at the branches that are 50% or more of the diameter of the trunk. And the third one is line. That's a pretty simple one when you have a planting that in some way is a row. Even if you're planting just two, three trees, maybe you're putting in two trios and you put them in as three and three. Well, you'll probably have them in some way close by each other. So line is simply any branch that goes in the line. So here from this tree to that tree and to that one, that's the line. That's the one line, and the other line is 90 degrees to it, or going right out into the aisle. So those are the two. You don't want to favor those branches. You don't want a branch growing from this trunk straight towards the other tree, and you don't want a branch growing from here straight out into the aisle. And we'll see examples of these, but that's the ones if they're in that angle, then they are candidates for easy choice removal to get down to your 12 to 15 branches. So let's select a few off of here. In the big category, there are a few. There's that one back there. There's this one. In fact, this one is could be the new trunk. And I could straighten this tree out and we'll do that straighten it up because it's actually starting to lean. Although this is the trunk and that's the one I cleared the chimney, I either straighten that out by pulling it or I just cut it off. And I don't like to be attaching trees too much. So let's just cut this one off. The other branch is perfectly able to take its place. And we will see tools and which tools to do different jobs.
So that took out a big branch. But you think that actually could have been the trunk. And it could have been the trunk. So don't be afraid of taking out a branch that's not in the right place. And now that one, you can see the diameter. That's, that is a big branch. So there's one strike against it. But it also goes straight out into the lane. So because it's one that's not in the right angle for the line, then that one too. Take that one out too. We removed two branches, so we're still not at the number, but because we took out and we changed actually what becomes the trunk, that's chimney again, that's chimney, that's chimney. Now we've reduced the number of branches, let's count it again, we're at 10, 11, 12, I see this one back there. That could have been removed in the chimney. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. That should have been removed in the chimney. So you see, as you get through your steps, you can come back on the points that were done. I see another one that would have should have been. And there's another important point is. Try to look at your tree from at least two angles. We'll look at that when we see looking at the tree. Get it from two angles to get to see what else has to be done. And that is the second step. So we saw the chimney. We saw choosing 12 to 15 branches. And the third one, there is a third step, is a final polish. Okay, so just to hit on a few comments, um, I wanted to look at, somebody had mentioned about uh, voles. You don't really see the plastic that much here, although you see it underneath here. Uh, we do have voles under the plastic but we also have the predators, so I don't worry about it. And anyway, we really cover the plastic in the virtual tour of the orchard, and that's where I explain it all. But basically, the thing that I thought would be the most problem with the voles turned out to be one of the least problems, and the thing that I never expected to be a problem are cats, and cats make the most damage. The cats, yeah, it's... Totally unexpected. Anyway, um, pear trees. Pear trees, why do they send out so many suckers growing straight, like four feet long in a season, five-year-old trees, zero fruit? Well, it really refers to that the branch angle. And pears are a little bit of the exception. It's a little trickier to, to properly um, prune and train pear trees. One point about pear trees is you do not want to train a branch from a pear tree below horizontal. So it kind of goes, there's an exception to everything, and pear trees are the exception. Uh, there's one thing, if you're getting suckers like that, I talk in, I don't even remember which one, I think it's in pruning techniques, the chapter on pruning techniques, can I click that? If we go to the chapter on pruning techniques, so these give you the different, so how do you place your pruners? You have, these are new videos, how to make a cockspur cut and big branch and undercut. So these are different videos you see to explain these steps. Here's a pear tree right next to it. And basically, I don't even remember where I talk about it, but I tell you one trick and just that one trick, honestly, if you, in some orchards, and I've seen orchards, or especially abandoned trees, people take over abandoned trees, and 
don't understand how to prune them. They, you can really cause problems by causing your trees to go vegetative and get tremendous amounts of suckers. So it's, it's somewhere in there. <laughs> I know it's in there. It's how to tame suckers. And just that, wow, is really a valuable. There's a great trick on taming suckers. And if you're caught with a lot of suckers, uh, knowing how to, I call them tame them, because you can completely get rid of the problem of suckers. And it, it's a question of understanding branch angle and understanding the most important, and this is what I go over a lot of times in this course, is why. you got to understand why you have a reaction. If you cut this, why is this happening? So that whole thing, as I mentioned earlier, about being able to project in the future, you're going to cut, every action will have a reaction. But what will that reaction be? The better you can predict what that reaction will be, then you'll come to a point where you go, okay, I know this will happen in two years, so I can cut this. And you, you just feel so much more confident. And Usually to really get the hang of it, you want to go through, I say, three cycles because most branches, that if you have a new branch happen, it will be three years before that branch will produce fruit. So if you have pruned, harvested, pruned, harvested, pruned, harvested, three cycles, by the third year, you see the results of what you pruned the first year and you go, oh yeah, he was saying that. Yeah, he did say that. And then if you have a reaction like crazy suckers, you'll go, oh, yeah, he did talk about that. That's why I got all those suckers. Don't get suckered into suckers. Understand why you have suckers. And most importantly, understand how to tame them. Oh, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a lot right there. Um, from Italy. Yes, thank you. Suckers are coming from branches that are mostly toward the top of the tree. Right. Well, I would say right there. If you're getting most of your suckers are at the top of the tree, the most likely reason is you have tried to limit the height of that tree. And the tree has a natural height that it will grow to. And if you bring it below two-thirds of that height, you will have a tremendous load of suckers at the top. So... Choosing rootstocks, giving the spacings, these are all important points. But if you have the reaction, then I would say let one of those suckers go, train it. I'll show you how to train in the course, but just bend it down. And then from there, you want to let that one go an extra meter, a meter and a half. And that will, that will calm the whole top of the tree down. It's really worth understanding what will happen when you do something. Um, you have suckers on the top of the tangerine tree. Well, I'm not familiar with tangerine, but I'm familiar with reaction. So that's the same reaction. You have suckers happening at the top because you're trying to hold that tree back too far. You probably don't have enough branches lower down to use up that energy and you know, action, reaction. So learning and keeping branches and, and spacing them, it, it's all important points. Um, does the diameter of the chimney light well increase as trunk diameter increases? Absolutely. As I say, if you go back in this video, you'll see I talk about if you have a big tree that you can't even put your arms around, it's that big, then you need a really big chimney. It could be, you know, an arm's length in one direction and an arm's length in the other. So yes, there is a ratio of how big the tree and how big the chimney you want to make. The Lespinas Leterme book, absolutely. That, that's Dr. Lespinas is the one who taught me. And that book is a great summary of their major techniques. It's, I wouldn't say it's a beginner's book. You really, it's meant for professionals or people who really have a familiarity with the different fruit trees, orchardists, and so on. It's a great book. If you're starting... It's, a, it's the best book to understand why and so on of pruning, but it's not the best book necessarily to start because there's so many really basics that you haven't even... They just assume you know, so just to let you know. Cats, yes, absolutely. 
Um, do you know if the techniques in the course will be applicable to sweet chestnuts as well? Yes, and I was looking for somebody's comment. Somebody had put a comment, actually learning these techniques. If you pass me the, the course, uh, the film, I think I put the video there. I, I first talked about these techniques and the three steps in the film, The Permaculture Orchard. So if some of you haven't seen the film, The Permaculture Orchard Beyond Organic, there's one chapter in there that basically goes over these same three steps. But after that, this was 2014, it was released. After that, I remember there was a guy said, yeah, my landlady has a huge fig tree. And he said, does it apply? I said, I've never pruned fig trees, but the principle should be the same. I say, just respect branch angle and so on for that fig tree. So he went ahead and pruned that fig tree. And he said, the landlady said, I have never seen this tree produce so many figs in 40 years. Well, does it work? Even though I don't know that tree, but the principles are the same. And so applying these principles is so important. And so I would say, yes, a sweet chest. I know it really works for walnuts. Probably the same for chestnuts. So that branch angle is really critical if you don't want to create long-term a lot of work in pruning. Um, okay, let's look at the last part. Let's go back to the video. And the last part is the final polish and pruning. So like I said, this if you just get this three steps and if some of you have maybe you have an old abandoned tree and you say oh my god you look at that and you go where do i start start with step one clear a chimney and uh, like the reaction is incredible when you clear the inside the core middle chimney of that big abandoned tree First of all, you're going to take out a lot of dead branches because that's one of the things. It's like, yeah, you're cutting in there and there's dead branches everywhere and you're clearing up. All of a sudden, you will see. So that's why this is a three-step because even if your tree hasn't been pruned in 40 years, when you've cleared a chimney, it will be clear as day which branches, if you will be removing which branches. But I say, if you have a big old tree, just do a chimney. Even if you don't do anything more, and that's already a lot of, you're going to take out a lot of little branches and dead wood. But once you do that, that tree will start re-greening from the inside. If your chimney is big enough to let enough light into the inside, you will have new branches appear where they haven't had a branch there in 40 years. So that's one of the biggest things about this chimney. So let's get the third one, the final polish, because... So far, if you notice in this video, I have not pruned anything on a branch. And that's an important distinction. Don't just start pruning on the branches. You don't maybe don't know what you're doing. Don't touch the branches on branches. Just focus on the trunk and do all your removal or chimney on the trunk itself. That's where the first thing is. And then once you've done that and you've selected branches, the third step, really easy, and it's the only pruning you'll need to do on a branch. Now, if you're happy with your tree, you've got it down to the number of branches you wanted. The third one is just doing a polish or a pruning, final pruning on each branch that you're keeping. If you only have 15 branches, now it's not that bad of a job. The simplest way to do that, and should have brought my bigger glove, but you want a big glove to just pass your hand under the branch and everything that you hook onto, you will usually break. That one's bigger enough with this glove that I don't want to break it. That I hook on. And why do that? It's a pruning of the branch without fiddling. I love this technique because that was always the hardest thing mentally is do I leave this one? Don't I leave this one? Now you can do it with your eyes closed. You run your hand under the branch hook. Then I, I'm hooking something on. You take it off. 
So if you don't even have to see what you're doing, then that becomes pretty quick. Run my hand down here. Oh, here's a big branch. I can break that off. Keep going. Oh, I come to this one. That's underneath the branch. That's a bigger one. Take it off. Keep going. You come to a branch underneath. Keep going. This, this, and there you go. So you go branch by branch, clearing off everything that is underneath. And that's all the pruning you need to do on this branch. We'll see more details about the branch and integrity and so on. But go through your whole tree, clearing out whatever, and all of a sudden, now you get a whole lot more air between branches because you've taken these little ones. And you say, why take out those? Why not take out these above? Because the branch that's under the main branch is going to be more in the shade. It'll produce smaller fruit. It will produce fruit that is not going to be colored as it should be. It just makes it simple. I said this technique is really meant to get you going quick and dirty. So let's review. We saw the first step, clear the chimney. Second step, 12 to 14 branches, looking at the rule of low, big, and line. And the third step is a final polish, is a pruning by passing something underneath the branch and taking out whatever's underneath. With those three, you got more than enough to get started. Remembering the difference, do you want a tree or do you want fruit? That's a good re recall reminder to get you going great. And there's a lot more details to come. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. So that's the quick and dirty to get you started. If you're new to this, I would highly recommend before you start playing around with your tree, you get the course. This, if you're experienced, this may have these three steps may be enough. If you don't even know how to make cuts or what tools to use and all the rest, or don't know your techniques, then I would really recommend you get the course. The, uh, this is the relaunch of the course, as I said before. So now the course has how many? 26 videos, all professionally filmed. We shot in the winter, we suffered, so you don't have to. And the advantage is if you just look at the screen, you see, wow, you can see everything of that branch. And that has been really useful because if you see it clearly, you understand why. And it's much easier to understand. If I had, we had shot this in the spring when the leaves, uh, not the leaves, but if the snow had melted, you just wouldn't see it the same way. So this is really useful for you because you can see the tree really well. Some people use a sheet that they put behind the tree to explain about the tree. Well, we got a sheet. We got a white sheet. It's called snow. And when we film on the right days with a whitish background, it really helps you see what's going on. We have over two and a half hours of content just in here, not counting all the links to some of the videos and information that goes further. So anytime you see a YouTube sign, well, there is a there is a description about, hey, there's more about that. Maybe we can, yeah, let's take a look at uh, mental or physical. So if you see this, for example, so you'll see all the different videos. In this one, there isn't, which one had some, well, certainly shrubs had you. And so we go through and we show you the basics of, there it is. Here's how you'll prune shrubs. And so each one has a video explaining a detailed technique of how we do it, why we do it, and... Some of them, if you're not on the YouTube, some of the video uh, that we add to the course are some of the videos we filmed for YouTube, but from we haven't been adding anything on pruning itself. We've been putting all that into the course. And for this relaunch, the course has been increased in price. So some of you have bought it in the past and you say, well, it's quite a bit. Yeah, it's quite a bit. 
but I can tell you it's really not much if you lose your prized tree. And is it a guarantee you won't lose your tree? Well, if you pay attention, you won't because there is only a few ways when you cut big branches that you will kill the tree like I killed 150. And if you're using a chainsaw, you'll kill them that much faster. So first of all, put away the power tools, please. And and learn the basics, learn how to make proper cuts. It's really, really important. The relaunch, the price of the course will be 187 US. But for those who are here or for those who catch this before midnight on Sunday, you will be able to get the discount for the relaunch. So now this course will be just 120. That's the virtual tour and the pruning course. So $120 for the uh, pruning course. You can take a look if you want. We also have the virtual tour. So it's really meant to, I don't want people traveling so far to come see and learn with us anymore. And so we've been trying to put this as easily and the, the 360 has been really great. We use it extensively in the virtual tour so you can see, take a look around as if you were in there with me and I was giving you a workshop. So let me just take, if there's any questions, I'll take a few of those. Um, can I also apply the technique to hollow crowns from Germany? trees without a leader mm. yes you can if it I almost if it's really hollow in some cases you're almost better to rebuild that tree from scratch which means cut it it, it everything is depends when I have thousands of trees I don't mind sacrificing a tree because for the long term, I'm always looking at long term, how will that tree be? How well will it work? And so you have to decide, can you? Yes, you can apply it, but you may want to consider rebuilding that tree from scratch. That root is still healthy. The tree may have had a lot of damage over the years, and it may be quicker long term to just start that tree above the graft and get it to go and rebuild it that way. At what age and size would you begin training branches? Well, we cover that in training versus pruning. I do a tree in two goes. When the tree is up to about, I, I do everything trained to about head height on a dwarf uh, tree. And then I come back a few couple of years later when the tree has grown the second top and then I prune it. So I do it in two goes. Uh, can I train a semi-dwarf to be more like a dwarf? Well, you can try, but as I said before, with every tree has a size that it wants to grow to, you can try, and there's a limit to how far I would constrain a tree, but to give you an example, can you? If you look at a bonsai, and I learned this the first time I went to the Montreal Botanical Gardens, and I saw a tree that in our climate grows to be 120 feet or 40 meters. And I saw that tree 60 centimeters, two feet high in a pot. And I thought, how in the world can this tree be 100 years old and be just two feet high? Look, trees can be constrained. It all depends on how much you want to work at it. If you have one or two trees, yes, you can constrain any tree quite a lot. But if you want it to be easy, and I focus a lot in this course on making it easy because you may not want to spend a weekend on a tree. So that's, that's a distinction right there. You want a fruit tree? Yes, well, there are fruit trees out there and you just need to go, I would say, start with two trios. Uh, do you also have to take out the branches that grow straight up or suckers? Well, I do cover that. Do you have to take them out? Well, you can do different things with them. Um, it depends on the sucker and how, where it is and 
So understanding why you got them in the first place is really at the basis of that. At what age size? Oh, we did that one. Um, if I if you were to start over with M26 or similar size dwarf, would you change your tree row spacing? <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I don't want to get into spacing. That's a whole different matter. Um, I would hope to do a video this year on spacing, but that's not the purpose of today. It's a whole subject in itself. I will say on that, if you and take advantage of this weekend, this is the time of year to be pruning. If you're not sure what to do, how to do it, hey, the pruning course, and listen, if you buy it and you think, well, you know, I'm really not happy with it, we do more than reimburse you. So trust me, uh, if you think, well, no, this didn't, it wasn't, it didn't really help me, just let me know. We'll reimburse you and more. So on that, I will say thank you for those who joined. Thank you for those who will be watching it as a, a YouTube and get learning, get your confidence so that you can prune with that confidence because pruning is, I put out a video this week, pruning is the most fun thing to do at this time of year. It's also the first gardening task of the year. So whether you have just a couple of fruit trees in your backyard, and I would even say, I say, I talk about fruit trees, but it applies to any tree because the principles are the same, whether it's a fruit tree or a maple tree or whatever tree. On that, take advantage of this weekend's special offer. If not, well, take it at full price. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Pruning course saying bye.